Hello, and welcome to the Q&A portion of the Intimacy Game Plan. These questions came from participants of the program that I've developed that helps couples go from roommates to intimate teammates so that they can remember why they got together in the first place, for the love of the game. Uh -huh. I'm Amy Culler, your intimacy coach, and you're here because you're interested in intimacy. So if you're in a couple and you wanna to learn to grow and play and score together, you'll find a link in the description where you can apply, talk to me, and see if this program is right for you. Mm -hmm. So let's get started, shall we? I think you touched on this in the first recording. If one partner is doing the exercises more than the other or the other isn't at all, can you still make progress? That's a great question. There are participants in this program who really aren't, their partner isn't necessarily taking it with them. And if that's the case, send them that initial email that I sent so that they know what the member site is so that they can access it with or without you and so that they can also contact me with or without you. I'm totally here for, for both both of you and yes you can actually inc absolutely increase the quality of your relationship if one person is doing it think about Michael Jordan when he got on a team he lifted the whole team when you want to change the mood you have the ability to change your mood and the one around you that's why this huddle is so amazing and it actually does affect the people around you just like a uh, a yawn does. Oh, I should have that, uh, pull that up. The science of it is in my book, The Huddle. I just can't pull it up at this moment. But when you yawn, it affects the people around you. We are integrated. We are connected. And your vibrations and your waves and your frequency and your mood affect the people around you. So if you let out a yawn, <sighs> spontaneous synchronicity, that's what it's called. So when you make this, mm, it actually affects the people around you. When you're in a restaurant and something goes by and it looks good, you go, ooh, everybody turns to look because what you're interested in sounds interesting to others. So when you have interest, when you put in a spark of presence, then it affects the overall team and everybody around you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sound good? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, and uh, next. I feel like I'm faking it. <laughs> what they feel like they're faking is making this sound, because mm -hmm, that's that simple yes sound. And at first, I'm getting people to fake it, mm -hmm, because when you fake it, you become more comfortable with it. I call that mm -hmm sound, those are huddle sounds. And the huddle is when you do that mm -hmm three times. I put a palm on my chest and I do it three times. Ready? Mm-hmm. 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 And even though I faked it right out of the blue, just like that, it pulls me right into my heart. It brings me present with you, whoever I'm talking to, with whatever is in front of me. Mm -hmm. It turns off the head and pulls me right into my heart. So can I affect that? Can faking it actually helps? So getting used to it, just like when, uh, I t in the book, I talk about when Kevin first got on a football team and they did a huddle. Hey, ho, go team. He, it felt silly. And he had to fake it the first couple of times. But then he understood how that spontaneous synchronicity, how the whole team suddenly gets their head in the same space, mind, body, heart, by intentionally doing it together. And it's OK to fake it. Oh, real quick. Put a fake smile on your face mm, and go, mm-hmm, really fake it over the top, mm-hmm. And you'll feel your mouth get moist because it activates, it creates interest, it activates all of your glands. Get, when this starts to get moist, all of you does. You with me? Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, number three. At what point does mm-hmm-ing with your partner stop being giggle-inducing and start feeling normal? constructive, logical. Oh, the same reason that you giggle is that same reason why some people giggle at a funeral. It activates that part of us. I pulled this piece out in my book. There's this is my notes version, obviously. The tone and delivery will change. Your thoughts and feelings will change. Keep huddling. Maybe slow it down. 
and try it a little bit softer like a prayer like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the reason why you're giggling is because it feels really emotionally vulnerable mm -hmm. that's why i have you doing it does it feel silly uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because we're not used to being emotionally vulnerable with each other we're used to talking about emotions and talking about emotional vulnerability but i'm telling you emotional vulnerability makes people feel unsafe we'll get to the communication later first mm. can you be vulnerable in that space between you can you create that mm -hmm. And I suggest you're practicing it and it might be silly so that when it isn't silly and you're in a bad mood or in, or in, a, in the silence, you're in the car and you can feel like you can cut the air with a knife, like you just had an argument over, over something, over, you know, speeding or honking or whatever it is in the car. And you know how that space comes and you feel like you can cut it with a knife. And then you're stuck in that mood. Maybe you've got to hold on to that mood for the rest of the day because you just had a little squabble in the car. This is a way to let go of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also you can make a, a contact and you can just go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You have these little ways to reset and reconnect each other because those little blow-ups happen. So when does mm-hming with your partner stop being giggle-inducing? When you keep doing it when you keep doing it in every mood, when you're in a sad mood and you just go to your partner and you're going, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they're like, mm -hmm. I'm here with you. Mm -hmm. It allows you to be in that emotion. So I would ask you to practice it in every emotion because that's when you get through the giggles and sometimes it brings up the tears and that allows your partner to stay with you even when you're crying or laughing so it's not as uncomfortable with the, for them because you know a lot of times partners are like what do I do what do I do what do I do and now they know what to do they stay in that huddle zone mm -hmm. number four what are some tips to help us to remember to do the I'm here, mm -hmm. I'm okay, mm -hmm. I'm willing. Mm -hmm. What are some tips to help us remember to do that mantra, how, H-O-W, throughout the day? I suggest you do it every morning before you get out of bed. You can even do it together. Like you can have somebody hold you and just go, I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm okay, mm -hmm. I'm willing, mm -hmm. you're sharing that uh, intention for the day for yourself. Mm -hmm. And then I sh I'd tell you to share that before you go into anything, before you go into a meeting, before you go into what this is going to be for you, that personal thing is there's, oh, this is all part of learning how to get yourself in the mood and to show up in whatever mood you're in. This is to help you get in the mood to connect in whatever mood you're in, you know? Uh, I think that's the hardest piece, actually, is that we can be comfortable with ourselves when we're in a bad mood, but how do we be with somebody else with whatever mood that they're in? And that's why I like that I'm here, I'm okay, I'm willing. Because if I'm with somebody who's angry, I want to be with them. I love, I love this person. I want to be with you while you're angry. I, I'm okay to be here. And I'm here with you while you're in that scary place. Mm -hmm. So knowing that this mantra is behind those, mm -hmm, I'm here, I'm okay, I'm willing. I'm willing to be with what is. So I practice that in the morning so that when, when you're in those scary moments in life, when you're in those confrontational moments in life, because that's what life is, and you come into your relationship to practice showing up, showing up when things are good and showing up when they're combative. So when I have that prayer to myself, that little intention, I'm here, mm -hmm, I'm okay, mm -hmm, I'm willing. Mm -hmm. And clients have used this in, in an MRI. Clients have used this when they've been up on the witness stand and they're scared. And it's like, how do you not leave your body when you're scared? How do you not check out? Maybe you've heard of fight, flight, or freeze. This mm -hmm, helps you not check out 
for a fight, flight, or freeze. And the place that you practice it is with your partner because that's why you have your partnership. Same as an athlete has their partners to practice when a ball is flying at them. <laughs> you have the practice for when somebody is in a mood, you can immediately go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I'm okay, mm-hmm, I can do this, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So these are the tools that we're using to get into whatever is showing up. So practice it in the morning before you get out of bed. Practice it before you go into a meeting. Practice it before you go into making love. Practice it before you're with people. Mm -hmm. Number five, are you going to be discussing using the huddle for self-pleasure? Or is that something that really mostly just effective with a partner? Mm. Huddling, mm -hmm. making those sounds increases your capacity for pleasure in all parts of your life. Mm -hmm. So I would say, especially over the past couple of years, we all need to increase our capacity for pleasure. So even if you're eating something, if you just ate it and you're like, did I even eat that? Did I just have a burger? But if you stop and you look at it and you're like, mmm. Mm, you actually enjoy it more. Saliva is magical stuff. I have the, the cue in my book. I can go into it another place. If people want to know about the science of pleasure, I'm happy to go into it. But that mm, mm, increases your capacity for pleasure. So whenever you're doing something for your senses, when you find yourself nodding to music, or is that good? When you've eaten something and you go, mm, make a sound express it share your pleasure with yourself do you have to be loud about it like me mm, mm. no that's my practice i'm your coach <laughs> but you can do it softly you can leave it a bit. Mm -hmm. so you're responsible for increasing your capacity for pleasure and i'd invite you to do that with self-pleasure i'd invite you to do that even to find the pleasure in giving someone else pleasure which are the exercises that are coming next in our program how to be with someone else's pleasure even though it's not necessarily your pleasure mm, that'll be coming up <laughs> so yes increase your own pleasure this is definitely a self-pleasure exercise there are uh, exercises in my book for self-pleasure increasing connecting with your privates and increasing your capacity for sensual pleasure sexual pleasure because that is what we are here to do we came into these crazy 3d bodies to enjoy the the sense the senses the five senses sight sound touch pleasure taste enjoy them while we've got them mm -hmm. and we have a capacity to shut down our pleasure you know and i and i'll share this here that i even say that to athletes because i talk about athletes a lot athletes are the way that that i the metaphor that i like to use and athletes they have to p break through that pain barrier they have to break through it, Ooh, run for 12 hours, athletes, Ironmen, whatever. And when you've overcome your capacity for pain, you've also checked out on your capacity for pleasure. Mm -hmm. So the sound gets you re-in touch with it because what your sexual encounters are meant to be is a sensual body exercise to allow your body's permission to come out and play and that's why you get into a relationship sometimes we get into a relationship and we stop growing and exploring pleasure so a self-pleasure exercise a self-pleasure practice and what we're coming up on in the course is a pleasure practice a shared pleasure practice because like i say Nothing longs to be shared more than intimacy. Mm -hmm. That's why we always feel like we're looking for somebody who can see us. Intimacy means a deep familiarity where you really know yourself, intimate with yourself. That's why it is a self practice, a self huddle practice. You're doing it for yourself and a self pleasure practice. Mm your job to stay in touch with your capacity for pleasure so I truly truly love that question thank you mm -hmm. all right and that is the five questions I hope I covered them and I invite you to send me your questions and 
Thank you for being a part of the Intimacy Game Plan. And uh, know, learning what it is that you're committing to and learning how to show up for yourself as a player <laughs> and for your partner as a teammate. Because, you know, good teams, good games, good sportsmanship is not an accident. These things take practice. Mm -hmm. So if you want to learn to practice and you want to be part of the Intimacy Game Plan, you'll find a link in the description where you get to talk to me and apply and see if this program is right for you. So I invite you to stay connected to yourself, each other, and me. And we'll see you soon, okay? Mm-hmm.